Hey everybody, welcome back to my place where we're delving into the sometimes frustrating but mostly incredibly rewarding world of indoor gardening. Last time we started from the ground up by talking about potting media and containers. Today we're talking about the essential ingredient for happy plants and that's light. People often call indoor houseplant collections indoor jungles and my place doesn't exactly resemble a jungle. I mean, there's not leaf litter on the ground and there's no insects crawling into my bed, but there are some things about the structure of a rainforest that I try and replicate here. Temperature and light, two of the most important things about growing successful indoor plants. All plants need light to survive. Do you remember that word photosynthesis from school? Well, that's how plants convert the sun into energy to grow. So it's really important. But this is where things can get a little bit frustrating because it's not as simple as just popping any plant in front of the window and hoping it does well. Different plants crave different levels of light and I think they can be categorised into three main zones in your home. Let's start with direct light because it can be very harsh and unforgiving on your plants and a lot of people get it wrong. That's the kind of light that streams in through a north facing window exactly like what I'm sitting in now. The quality of this light is really harsh and bright. It'll probably be beating in this window all morning. Now, not many indoor plants will tolerate this kind of light. It's just too much. So if you want to use plants in a sunny spot, you'll need to choose ones that are used to surviving exposed conditions like cacti or succulents. On my bedside table, really close to the window with lots of direct light, I've got Cephalocereus or Old Man Cacti. And these are amazing plants. They grow up in the high altitude in the Andes Mountains. And those little white hairs act as a kind of sunscreen that reflect harsh UV rays. Bright light can be really damaging to your indoor plants, as I found out the other day. I want to show you something I did to one of my favourite plants. Epipremnum pinnatum. Now, I only left this in the sun for maybe a few hours, but when I came back to check on it, all of the chlorophyll had bleached out of the leaf. And if I'd left it there for that afternoon or the following day, it could have killed this plant completely. So it's really important that you get the right plant for the right light. When you move one or two metres back from a north facing window, you enter the most useful light zone. This is indirect light. Most indoor plants are going to be happy here, particularly anything that hails from a rainforest environment like monsteras or philodendrons. Most of the plants that we grow indoors come from under the canopy in the forest, and that means they've adapted to lower light conditions and do really well as indoor plants. There's a few ways to tell how much light you have in different parts of your home. You can go the high-tech option, which is where you would use a light meter or download an app. And there's also a very simple method, which is where you use your hand, hold it up against a leaf and see how much of a shadow it casts. The sharper the shadow, the more light it's getting. It's a really good idea to wander around your home wherever you keep your plants and just practise this and soon you'll get a really good idea of the different zones in your house. Full shade is at the lowest end of the usable light spectrum. It's tricky to get right, but it's really important that you do, so careful plant selection makes all the difference. Some of my favourites are Aspidistra, or cast iron plant, and snake plant, Sansevieria. Both of those do really well in low light. This is one of the darkest areas of my home. It's under a staircase and there's a skylight above, so I class this as low light but I've had great success with this Epipremum Snow Queen or Devil's Ivy. This is a great standby house plant. When I bought it, it was just a little tacker, maybe 20 centimetres long. And over the past three years, it's grown to this really beautiful specimen of five metres in length. So even if you have a home that doesn't have bright light, you can find plants that are gonna thrive in your environment. So your plants will actually tell you if they're not getting enough light like this philodendron radiatum here, for example. When I first started growing this, I was giving it a lot more light and the leaves are much more closely spaced together. And then once I've moved it into the shade, you can see that the stem or the internode space between those leaves is getting longer and longer. And that's because the plant is trying to find more sun, the same as what it would do in nature. When I think of tropical rainforests, it's not just the quality of the light that comes to mind, it's also the temperature. The tropics are warm pretty much all of the time. 
My place is really well insulated and I keep it quite warm throughout winter. You want to keep your plant temperature as stable as possible. So that means don't put it in front of a heater or too close to a cold window in the middle of winter. But if your place is just cold, there's one very cheap and easy thing you can do to help. I take basic bubble wrap and I cover my pots with it. Keeping the roots insulated gives the plants enough protection to get them through the colder months. Every house is going to have its own unique set of challenges, but also opportunities. You might have a big window with sun streaming through it or a corner somewhere that gets indirect light. Either way, there is going to be a plant that will thrive in your home. Understanding the basics of what your plants need goes a long way to you creating your own unique indoor jungle. Now, next time, we're going to talk about watering and how not to give your plants too much of a good thing. <laughs>